No one would believe that the child of heaven worshipped by Sassanon for a century is a Fizbane that claims to be a human god. I'm sorry. Greetings everyone. In today's video, we will be taking a look at the highly anticipated, long-lost, illegitimate daughter of Virgil, Somzakura Buzembo. Somzakura is a lightning DPS unit. She belongs to the Shinu faction of characters and uses Divine Grace as the resource to execute her skills. Similar to best boy Meng Zhang, Som Zakura fights using two stances. While in her base form, her primary objective is simply the acquisition of Divine Grace, which can be obtained via her basic attack, Skill 1, Skill 2 and Dodge Counter. Once her Divine Grace meter is full, Casting skill 3 will activate her Devil Trigger and enter her Sakuya state. While in this state her Divine Grace will slowly deplete over time, skill 1 and skill 2 will change into their variant forms and grants her a Blossom mark on hit. Although this state can remain active indefinitely, once her Divine Grace reaches zero, she will no longer gain Blossom marks. Casting skill 3 at any point will return her to her normal form. Her basic attack has five sequences and will generate a set amount of Divine Grace on hit. Her dodge skill will trigger a two seconds time fracture. Using a basic attack immediately after triggering her dodge skill will counter with a judgment cut and grant a set amount of Divine Grace. While in her base form, skill one, cater one crack, will unleash a flurry of attacks against the surrounding foes and generate a set amount of Divine Grace on hit. Skill 2 Carter 3 Lightning delivers a short three-string combo against the locked-on target, generating a set amount of Divine Grace on hit. Skill 3 Carter 9, Sumzakura, can only be cast while her Divine Grace is full. In a flash, Sumzakura devastates all surrounding foes within her reach. Reduce the movement speed of the locked-on target by 50% for two seconds, resetting the cooldown of her skills while entering the Sakuya state. While in her Sakuya form, Skill 1 is changed into Kata 1 Halt and can be cast up to three times in rapid succession. Each hit landed will generate a Blossom Mark if Divine Grace is present. While in her Sakuya form, Skill 2 is changed into Kata 3 Dance and can also be cast up to three times in rapid succession, with each hit generating one Blossom Mark if Divine Grace is present. Both skills in her Sakuya form have a 10 second cooldown and their cooldown is reduced based on how many segments you are unable to cast. 6 second for 2 segment, and 3 second for 1. In addition, all sources of her damage will generate a set amount of points for her Demon Sakura gauge. While in possession of Blossom Marks, casting her basic attacks will consume the marks to perform one of two alternate skills depending on her current Ether code. While using blue and yellow code, this ability will take the form of up to three rapid dashes, phasing through the surrounding foes and dealing massive lightning damage. And while using her red ether codes, this ability takes the form of a series of powerful judgment cuts, casting skill three at any point during Sakuya state. Performs several multi-dimensional slashes, tearing through enemies and space alike. Upon sheathing her blade, a powerful final blow is dealt and she returned to her base form in addition, if Demon Sakura points were less than 100 when Skill 3 was activated, reduce the action speed of the locked on target's action by 50% for 3 seconds. If Demon Sakura points reached 100 points, immediately trigger a 3 second time fracture on cast and increase the crit rate of the final hit by 50%. Her ultimate, Execution by a Thousand Petals, allows her to briefly enter her Sakuya state and unleashes countless blows against the surrounding foes. On hit, the team's crit rate is increased by 12% for 10 seconds. While Tsukuyomi is in the party, her ultimate skill chain Moonlit Sakura increases the team's crit rate by 12% and skill damage by 25%. In addition, the final blow of skill 3's Fallen Sakura will have its armor penetration increased by 40%. Furthermore, 
The team's attack is increased by 15% and lightning damage by 30%. Tsukuyomi's Thunder out of the blue skill have its cooldown reset and gains 20 rage. In addition, within 4 seconds after activating the skill chain, Tsuki's skill 3 will not require a Thunder Seal to be present to evolve into its next form, nor will it go on cooldown for hitting an enemy without one. While Jin A and Tsukuyomi are in the party, their ultimate skill chain Pheasant under the Blood Moon will increase the team's attack by 40% and lightning damage by 30%, increase the team's crit rate by 12% and crit damage by 30%. In addition, decrease the enemy's physical, fire, lightning and wind resistance by 30%, increase the team's skill damage by 30% and ultimate charge rate by 60%. All effects remain active for 15 seconds. Lastly, when self or a teammate triggers a time fracture, she gains 15% of her ultimate charge. This effect can be triggered once every 0.5 seconds. Now that we have a better understanding of her kit, here is our game plan. While in your base form, your primary objective is simply Divine Grace Acquisition. While on blue code, you will enter the field with a full gauge, and red code's initial startup can be remedied with some divine senses. But after that first rotation, you will need to grind Divine Grace. You can do so fairly quickly by cycling through Skill 1, Skill 2, your basic attacks and your dodge counter. The counter is extremely good at generating Divine Grace, so try to get one off as often as possible in your base form. For this example using Blue Code, we will activate Skill 3 to enter her Sakuya state from here. Use either three consecutive skill ones, skill twos, or a mixture of the two if you got interrupted to gain three Sakura marks, followed by three basic attacks to quickly burn the marks with her dashes. In a longer fight, you can use skill one three times, basic attack three times, skill two three times, basic attack three times, Basic attack while waiting on skill 1's cooldown, then skill 1 three times. Basic attack three times, skill 2 two times. Basic attack two times, and finish things off with a full power skill three. If you want to spice things up or have her signature functor, you can give this one a try. This combo have a lot less downtime and allow you to cast a full power skill three much sooner, since the functor grants plus 40 points when you enter the Sakuya state. If you are not using her functor, you can still use this, but you want to remain in the Sakuya state until your demon Sakura meter is full to get its full damage. For red code, the combo is pretty much the same, with the exception of how the marks are used. Simply using basic attacks will not activate your judgment cuts. Instead, we want to hold the attack input for about a second when you see this red glow. Release and immediately hold and release again. Your follow-up hold and release should be slightly faster than the initial one to trigger rapid cuts. Repeat this process until you'll burn all the marks. I recommend loading into a recurring dream stage. Add two Divine Sense warps. Enter the Sakuya state and practice the basic attack hold. Once all of your swings consistently show the red glow at about this interval, you are ready. Once you got it down, your run will look something like this. In this longer scenario, we will be using two divine senses for the Divine Grace kickstart. And as you guys can see, we are able to enter our Sakuya state fairly quickly. I find looping 1-1-1 to Judgment, followed by 2-2-2 two, two, two to Judgment, and back to 1-1-1 one, one, one Judgment to be the most effective play with Red Code. This should land you nine Sakura marks and 15 plus Judgment cuts in the ideal scenario.
Speaking of ether codes, 3 blue is recommended for all players for reason we've already covered. This line will eliminate the Divine Grace grind at the start of your encounter by giving you a full meter to begin with. Increase the damage dealt by your second and third dash attacks when consuming Sakura marks, and their damage can further increase base on skill 3's level while in possession of Divine Grace in Sakuya State. Your attacks are increased by 30%, and the damage dealt by skill 3's final hit changes from 0.7% to 1.4% for each demon Sakura mark consumed. Red Code, aka Make Daddy Proud Mode. Remove the dash ability given to your basics from the Sakura marks in favor of the Judgment Cuts. In addition, Chain Casting Judgment Cuts will now allow you to cast more than one slashes per mark, and casting them consecutively will increase their damage by up to 150%. When it comes to Functors, her signature Shikigami Seira Nubume will increase the base damage of skill 1, skill 2 and skill 3 by 18%, increase the rate of Divine Grace acquisition in her base form. Upon enter Sakuya State, she gains 40 Demon Sakura points. And while casting her consecutive skills in Sakuya State, the third hit will trigger an additional instance of damage dealing 700% lightning damage. The Functor is a nice quality of life upgrade for her, and pretty much guarantee she get a full power skill 3 off before her Divine Grace runs out. For my free-to-play squad, our old faithful Shikigami Aosaji Nohi is more than serviceable, providing a 10% crit rate and a 30% crit damage at base. Because this is a free-to-play Functor, you'll be able to max transcend it over time if that's something you're into. for our sigils. The new feather in the storm will increase lightning damage by 10%, and each time a lightning skill hits, skill damage is increased by 7.5%, stacking up to three times. And yes, if your Tsukuyomi is not using her signature functor, she can also run this set in slots 1, 3 and 5. For slot 2, 4 and 6, run Acheron's Obol, this will increase her attack by up to 9% each time Divine Grace is gained, and grants up to 36% crit damage when it is expended. As for your enchantments, look for attack, crit rate, crit damage, elemental bonus, and skill damage. Lootbacks are great if you can get them on a second line for her and her skill chain partners. Warps gives you the freedom to personalize your characters in a way that best fits your playstyle. As such, the ones I recommend may not be the best ones for you. But if you want my recommendations, they are as follows. For slots 1 and 2, we want two power-up melee, one judge and one executioner. For 3 and 4, we want two telepathize force field ones and two EM flux. If she's in a party with Tsukuyomi and Kotachi, replace the telepathize force fields with two unfetters. In fact, go ahead and put two unfetters on their warps as well. For five and six, we have a little more options. If you are running blue code, which I'm sure a good 80% of you will be, run two evolution particles and two telekinesis vector three. Alternately, you can replace the vectors with two kinetic mods to buff your entire kit inside of modifier mode. For red code, everything remains the same, but I strongly recommend running two divine scents on five and six. That way you'll able to enter her Sakuya state almost instantly at the start of battle like you can on blue code. Replace either the telekinesis vector or the kinetic mods. When it comes to team comps, her best team is going to be the full Shinu Death Squad. If your Katachi just isn't build, or you somehow don't have her yet, Hera, Ling and Heimdall are all fantastic picks for that final slot. If you don't have Sukuyomi, the Thandi pair with Shu are a very good option as well. The standalone becomes a very good teammate in the future. But for now, I wouldn't run her without Shu. You can also run her with Mung Zhang and Enlil, 
Heimdall and Ukuni. For new players, you can use bootleg Tsukuyomi and Katachi. For a 30% lightning shred and plus 30 divine grace on the skill chain, you can also replace bootleg Tsukuyomi with either Bastet or with bootleg Buzenbo. In closing, some Sakura Buzenbo is going to be one of those account-defining units. Whether you're someone looking to clear all the content the game has to offer, or a free-to-play looking for a good character to carry your account to the end game, this much I can assure you, she will not disappoint. But you already knew that.